All right, guys. So tonight, um, working on the boat again. We're to the point now where I want to flip it. Uh, I've been really dreading this. Focus. I've been really dreading this. Uh, but the time has come, and i got to do it now before I put more weight on it. So what I need to do is I need to flip this boat, and I need to weld on the keel full length. Um, I'd like to be able to weld the, the splash rails down the side and then I really and then I need to get underneath the boat on each side and weld in the reverse chines. So the splash rail I can maybe do, I, I mean I can easily do if I got the boat tilted up, but the keel's the biggest thing. I've got to have this boat self-supporting either flipped over or uh, on its side in some manner where I can, I can run that keel full length from, from front to back. So I've been really dreading this part for the whole whole build basically because I had no idea how I was going to flip it. So I, I tried uh, one technique, failed. So now we're to the point now where I've came up with two chain hoists there I've got tied to the trusses. And I've got two straps here, a little wider than the boat. I may have to take those straps and move them wider. I'm not real sure. As I said before, this is I'm not telling you guys how to do this part because I've never done it. And it's still kind of tricky to me. So I've supported the center of the boat so that way whenever I start putting pressure on it, it won't bring the sides in. But the idea is with the chain hoist on this side, hopefully I can pick the boat up enough where I can get uh, a pivot point where I can roll it over on this side and then either roll it itself or let it down. That's the idea. Um, I did a little bit of research and that's kind of what I'm seeing. Ideally, you need four chain hoists uh, where you can raise and lower the boat from each side. I don't really have that. Uh, I've got some, some come-alongs here where if I need to use those, I can. Uh, it's just really a pain doing this by myself because you really need a guy on each, um, you know, each chain hoist or each come-along. So anyway, we're going to give it a go and see. Um, Ideally, I'd like to have the boat put together more, but I'm just afraid of the weight. I'm tying off to the trusses of my building here. So, you know, I figure this boat weighs right around 1,000 pounds right now, a little bit under maybe, between, I'd say between 850 and, and 950. So I don't want to put a ton of pressure on my trusses, but at the same time, I needed it to this point where it's structurally sound enough to flip it. So anyway, I'm going to quit rambling here, set you up on a time lapse here, and we'll see if we can't get this boat flipped. All right, got dirty. All right, so, finally got it done. That was a, uh, that was a chore. That was, a, that was a real chore, but there it is, there it sits. All 25 feet and 100 inches wide of the boat. Uh, didn't damage anything. It didn't fall on me, so that's a plus. Uh, there it is, it's flipped now. So that's awesome because I almost quit halfway because I didn't think I could roll it over. I almost, I almost stopped halfway through once I got it leaning over and said, well, I'll just deal with it. But I'm glad I didn't because uh, this is great now. So what, what I'm going to do now is I've got a 25 foot uh, piece of, of angle, inch and a quarter or inch and a half. I can't remember which one it is. Of angle so what that I'm gonna weld this right down the center I'm gonna weld the keel on it I'm not putting any runners on this boat um, I don't really believe they're necessary I think you know this boat here I'm not gonna really use it to bust through a bunch of ice so I'm not really worried about icebreakers in the front um, and the only thing you're doing with those rakers is is creating drag um, you know if I was to be putting this on a flat bottom boat, 
uh, where I'd want to maintain them strakes. I may put a couple just to keep a good straight line, but with this boat having as deep of a V as it's got, going straight is not going to be a problem. So, come around all my rigging here. So, what's going to happen after I get the keel welded on is I've got 10 foot pieces of the rips that I made whenever I did the transom, you'll remember. And those rips are going to end up getting welded in from, from right here over. That's going to be a, a flat spot right there. And it's going to come up 10 feet. And what's that? what that's going to create is that's going to create a reverse chine on this v-bottom boat and what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to give me a, a bunch of lift whenever i'm coming on on the plane so with this boat being a v-shaped and having as much weight as it's going to have in it uh, without those reverse chines this boat's going to have a tendency to dig real hard in the water but those flat areas those reverse chines kind of act as bird wings and what they'll do is they'll catch water and they'll keep the boat up on top of the water and they'll give me the lift that I need to get this big bastard up and out of the water and on plane. So anyway, that's that. I just, uh, I figured I'd share with you. It turned out pretty good. Um, I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, now that I can see the whole bottom all the way through, the symmetry looks really, really good. The, uh, the angle looks real good all the way down. So I was a little worried around about the front just because I didn't bring it together anymore, but it looks pretty good. Uh, so anyway, next thing's that, weld the keel on, and then we'll hit the reverse chines, and then we'll work on these uh, the splash rails. I've got angle iron for the splash rails, but so far it looks good. I really like the lines of this boat. I, uh, I'm glad I didn't go full width with straight up and down sides. I uh, I know it gave me a little bit more room, but I'm going to have plenty of room in this boat anyway. I, uh, I really like the lines of this boat. So anyway, that'll be tomorrow's project. It's like 1230. I've got to work tomorrow and it's been a hundred degrees for the last five or six days and it's still about 90 right now at midnight it feels like. So, all right. So it's the next night here and we're going to continue working on this boat. Going to put the keel on it. So. Focus, there it is. So I've got the uh, the parts and pieces laid up here, basically that we're gonna use for this step. This is why we rolled this boat over. So you can see there, that all needs to be cleaned up. There's some goobers that uh, you know came through whenever I welded, welded the other side of it. So that's all gonna get cleaned up with the grinder. And then uh, here's my keel. This is a piece of inch and a half uh, angle iron. Six, 3 16 thick and I'm going to chop the corner off of this get this started and we'll start at this end and lay that sucker in there and then it'll come all the way to the front real nice and neat this is the piece of plate here this is the reverse chine that I was talking this is going to get a inch and a quarter rip on the bottom and this will sit flat and then whenever you take off on plane you know this is six inches wide and ten foot long and there's two of them so there's a lot of surface area there for that water to catch and lift this big boat up and out of the water uh you know a lot of your riveted boats um almost all your fiberglass boats have a reverse chine built into them but this is the reverse chine is something you very rarely see in a uh, a welded plate boat because it's kind of a pain in the ass and uh you know so it's kind of cool i'm glad i'm able to do it i think there is a, a big benefit to be a, having that reverse chine in a boat. You can imagine that's just like an arrow trying to dig down in the water. That's great for cutting through the water, but at the same time, to get the big sucker on plane and get it up on top of the water, you need a little bit of lift. So other than that, uh, I'll get you guys set up on a little time lapse here and go ahead and we're gonna clean up this whole length real nice and neat, knock the big stuff off, and then we'll start laying in and uh, getting this keel welded on quicker and get the boat flipped back over and on a trailer better.
All right, so uh, you seen I got those pieces. Uh, they're all welded up. First one's cool, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install them now. Uh, here they are set on the boat. I went ahead and I've cut a 45 uh, on the front corner of this one. I'll piece it in after it gets welded. And so that's how it looks on the boat. Now I, I kind of figured this whenever I welded it, but thing took a little bit of a of a warp and a bend just because I was putting so much heat right there on the end of it. So you can see it's got a little curl to it, which you know I jump I jump around. Uh, you know aluminum notorious for that so jump around here and there that's why in the time lapse you guys see me going back and forth from one end to the other you know to try to keep the the heat away and admittedly on a piece like this I probably could have let it sit you know good while then came back but you know these these warps ain't bad to pull out so whenever you've got a warp like this I found you can see how it's it's kind of curled like that um, ideally you want to start from one end and work your way down tacking but whenever you've got a bend in it, I find it's easier to go the halfway point or wherever the bend is, and then I can pull it back this way on each end. You can kind of see see how it's set there. This is about where I want it. Uh, so I got a good place to put a bead there. And then I'll, I'll go basically from the middle out and I'll start torquing it. I can, I can do a lot more pulling against this than I can against just this, and I'll get it back into place. So I'm leaving it um, a little shy there at the end. I got to do some grinding. I'm going to take out a little of this, a little bit of this material here, uh, and then I, I want to save at least three sixteenths for my my cap that's going to go here and can block that off. So anyway, there it is. Uh, it's set on there. All the measurements came out real good. That sucker is it's dead nuts level. So that's that's what I was shooting for was level. It, uh, it looks looks good on the boat. It'll look better once I get it on and it's all straight. But We'll get to welding on it. I'll set you guys up time lapse again and uh, we'll get that done. So the boat bottom is done. We're ready to flip it back over. Got the keel all welded in. Ground down. Looks nice there. The reverse chine came out real nice. It's all ground down. All the high spots on the overlaps are ground down. Waiting on the spray rail until I get this thing flipped over because I don't want to put so much pressure on just that spray rail whenever I flip it. But uh, everything looks real good. Bottom of the boat turned out real nice. Bottom of the boat turned out real nice. It really gives it dimension and look and you can... You'll be able to see how much you can see that those reverse chines really, really help it. So anyway, um, went ahead and I purchased two extra chain hoist. This time, hopefully, it'll be easier to flip it. Before, I just had two chain hoist and two come alongs. This time, with four chain hoist, I ought to be able to get it to, to drop and flip easier. So, I've got my mess half ass picked up here. We're gonna flip this boat over, set it on the trailer, get it out of here, clean up, and then we'll, uh, we'll bring it back in and start working on it again. So, anyway, set you up on the time lapse. Hopefully, this time, it looks easier. <laughs> 